up everyone, thank you for tuning in. So today I'm going to be installing this AEM high flow in tank fuel pump into my 1991 Acura Integra DA9. I am also going to be making an access panel to more uh, easily get access to the fuel pump in the DA um, generation Integra. And the reasoning for that is there's a few select Hondas out there in Acuras to where you would actually have to drop the fuel tank to gain access to the fuel pump. Now there's many great videos on YouTube and instructions on how to do that. It's a very straightforward job to experience mechanics. It can be done within 30 minutes from what I've heard and seen. Um, for those of you guys that are not too mechanically inclined, it can take about a couple of hours. Uh, not, not really any crazy tools necessary. So I'm doing this more or less just to make things easier. Now some of the negative stuff that I've seen is just like, well, how many times do you plan on changing a fuel pump? Or like, why would you risk damaging the body? So on and so forth. Here's the way I look at it. My 87 and 88 Honda Accord, they have access panels to the fuel pump. My EK Civic has access to a fuel pump. I believe the DC generation Integra has access to a fuel pump. What I'm trying to say is there's many, many different generations and different models of Hondas and Acuras that have access panels to the fuel pump. So why they chose to do this design on the DA Integra and the CB7 that I'm aware of, I have no idea, but um, I just want to make ease of access for things. So how many times do we plan on changing fuel pumps? I don't know. For like somebody that just has a car, it is a daily commuter, they don't plan on building it. I get it. That makes a lot more sense to just, you know, drop the fuel tank once, put in a new fuel pump in, put everything back together and everything's good to go. Because, um, yeah, when is the next time you plan on changing a fuel pump, you know, within how many years it lasted originally? For those of us that I'm going to assume watching this channel like to build cars, tune cars or, do, or whatever, uh, it makes more sense. I got a fuel pump right now because I have no plans on going E85 into this Integra, but maybe down the road I want to run E85, I got to change it to an E85 compatible fuel pump. So, you know, it, there's that. Another thing too, there's a lot of great, or not great, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, um, lesser known brands made in China fuel pumps that we may cheap out on or somebody else that cheaps out on. Install it and it lasts maybe less than a month, less than a year, and guess what? We got to do the whole job all over again. Uh, hardware, I've seen hoses burst, they're, they're, they're wiring, you know, just stupid little things. Or later on, if you guys don't, don't know, I want to run a higher, a more upgraded fuel system, you guys are going to have to upgrade the wiring for the fuel pump to go from 12 volt to, I believe, a 14 volt um, wiring system onto your fuel pump, if that makes any sense. So guess what? You're gonna have to drop the pump, or sorry, drop the tank again to upgrade the wiring for, to gain access to the fuel pump to do all that. So there's just more pros in my mind on why it's better to make an access panel to this Integra rather than just drop the tank every single time you gotta gain access to the fuel pump for whatever reason you need to do. So, and another thing I'll just add too, even if this isn't, if we're not all, you know, car builders or whatever, if for whatever reason the pump decides to die whenever it chooses to die and we're down the road or we're going across you know the state or whatever i find myself in a way better even if i was mechanically you know inclined to hey if there's if i'm like 100 miles away from a shop that carries a fuel pump that can work in my car guess what i don't need to be in the side of the road drop the tank drain the gas do all that stuff i can just literally you know, hopefully hit somebody up or have somebody bring me that fuel pump and I can do it in the side of the road in way less time than it would take to have to go through all the time just to drop the fuel tank and what so on and so forth. So just food for thought, you guys do whatever you guys want to do. So with all that said and done, I'm gonna get, let's get this started. Okay, so have it marked out, have everything off, all the carpeting, rear seats and stuff like that. I'll give you guys a quick guide uh, later on and tell you guys how to install or remove the seats, it's fairly easy. Uh, in fact, we'll just talk about that right now. So on one side, you have this bracket holding in two 10 millimeter bolts. Same thing on this side. Um, and then there's one hidden bolt right here that you're gonna need to get to, to remove the bench portion of the seats. And then you got two metal brackets. Again, I'll show you guys visually, they're hooked onto here. So move the seat up like that once this bolt is gone. Fairly simple. Moving on to the cutting port. Okay, so I use this reference based off of image I've seen off the uh, DA9 Mafia Facebook page. Some, I just typed in fuel pump and somebody already did a job like this. So I'm, I'm using that picture as reference, but I'm gonna try to like do 
kind of my iteration of it, kind of give you give you what I find. So this way, left to right with Y7 and 3 sixteenths. I'm using this as a guide. So the picture, um, I can't think of the name of this thing, sound deadening or what, whatnot. Um, I believe his was actually a bit further, with a bit bigger in length than this. So I'm just using this as a reference. I'm using this 10 millimeter bolt for the bench seat portion, the bottom portion as a reference, as well as this little divot right there for reference to the pick. I have no idea how far I'm gonna be going. I'm, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna go right here, mark that. This is gonna be exactly six inches. It may, be, it may be more or less, I'm not sure yet, but this is where I'm gonna start cutting. So again, just like as far as these groups go, I'm trying to like find a good spot to use as a guide for the cutting wheel. So try to use this, the high flat spots, go from there and see how it ends up working out. So real quick, how to diagnose a failed fuel pump. So at first I thought it was the main relay, which I got dangling down right there. It's a very common um, part in all these 80s, 90s, even early 2000 Hondas for the solder points on them to go out. Um, under further investigation, actually, I found out it was not the main relay. Uh, I'll show you exactly where it's at here just real quick. Sorry for the rat's nest. I'll put, a, I'll put an element in here so you guys can see where the mounting point is for the main relay right here. So this bolts up to that hole. And then to the right of that mounting point is gonna be this guy. I'm not, I can't think of exactly what it does at the moment, but hangs right next to the right of that. So you're gonna have to take off this whole bottom portion, the dash to be able to access it in extension 10 millimeter and then you'll be able to drop down. You guys can get it. But anyway, the way that I tested it is, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard for you guys to hear it. Hopefully you guys can, but just grab onto it. You'll be able to feel it for sure. So it's supposed to click like three times. So you're gonna hear the key. Okay. See if you guys can hear it. Okay, and then when I hit this, when I hit the uh, starter switch on the clutch, you know, to actually crank the car, you should feel it click again. So there should be like a total of, I would say three clicks prior to you actually starting the vehicle. So when you go on the second position right before start, you should feel a click and then it'll click again. And then when you start it, it clicks while it's cranking. So main relay is good. So I put the phone, um, I set it right over where the fuel pump lies and when, when I put it on second position right before it cranks, then you can actually not hear the fuel pump prime at all. This is with the seat, uh, all the seats and the carpeting off. So yeah, I knew for a fact that it was the fuel pump. So that's where I'm gonna start going in from there if you guys wanted to try to diagnose the problem, if it's whether it's the main relay, which is very common to fail on these cars or the fuel pump. All right, before I get started, just some extra safety precautions. At minimum, have a fire extinguisher ready. Worst comes to worst. I mean, there should be more than enough room between the body and the fuel pump assembly itself. So I'm not too worried about cutting it from what I've seen. I got an old dismantled um, piece of a dryer metal that's blocking the seats just to catch all the sparks and stuff like that. Because I have like a welding blanket or whatnot to lay over stuff that you don't want to get damaged. Or if you're running a stripped interior, then you really don't have much to worry about. Um, small stuff, disconnect the negative battery open the gas tank, let out any pressure that's in the system. Uh, and yeah, I'll let you guys make your own grown up decisions, you know, gloves, glasses, ear protection, all that stuff. So just want to point that all out there for you guys. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get cutting. All right, let's see what we got. Perfect, there it is. All right, so I did end up actually going six inches from here to here. You guys need to use that as reference. All right, time to start pulling this out. All right, I'm gonna start removing this fuel pump housing. Got 10 millimeter bolts all around. Got a little hose clamp right here. Use a pair of pliers and just wiggle its way around to get rid of that, get rid of that hose. I'm unsure right now at the moment what bolt size needs to get rid of that banjo bolt. Um, as far as the wiring goes, I'm probably gonna keep that intact. I don't think to get rid of it um if so i'll let you guys know i know it's um phillips said 
right there. I don't know how the hell the heck, even with the small screwdriver I got. Hopefully I'll be able to loosen this and orientate it in a way where I can unscrew it easier if need be. And I still need to figure out how to unplug that, but I'm not really too worried about it right now. So I'm gonna proceed to get these 10 millimeter bolts and the banjo bolt off and go from there. Okay, so we're moving the banjo bolt. Keep in mind that on top of this is gonna lie a washer like this. There's one also on the other side right there. So keep that in mind when moving this thing not to lose it. And I'm gonna continue on to remove the assembly. A suggestion I have for you guys also, depending on how dirty this area is uh, with all like the dirt and grime and stuff like that, before removing the assembly, try to you know, do your best to try to clean it up, air duster or compressed air or whatnot. Just so when you, you pull the assembly out, you won't risk getting all that stuff in the gas itself. So this is as far out as I can pull it out as of right now that I feel comfortable with. And the reasoning why is you guys can probably see the damage that I created by accident. Because I thought there was a cover cap um, holding it down that I tried prying off. Come to find out that it's all one piece. So that's my mistake. Do not do that. Thankfully the whole part did not break. So it's still making a good connection and it's still somewhat intact. Um, I do have an idea of what I'm going to do um, to cover that up, fix it up. Um, so the best method I'm going to tell you is if you guys can, um, whatever tools you guys got, remove that Phillip head that held the ground to there. Then there's this plastic zip tie that holds the whole positive negative to this. Just um, carefully cut that. There's actually quite enough room, there's quite enough slack with the harness back here to where you can pull it out as far as this this is as far as you know comfortable that i feel right now i'm sure if i cut more of the body off i could have a little bit more uh, room to play with but i don't feel as of right now that's necessary if you guys want to go a little bit bigger cutting this way um go for it as far as this goes i should be able to remove the pump itself the way it sits right now i just got to remove this hose right here positive negative connections and it should just slide out uh, uh, <laughs> slide out of the assembly from the bottom Okay, so this plastic cover, just gotta play with it a little bit and it pops right off. You can see one of the terminals for positive right here. This is gonna be seven millimeters. Take both of them off on positive and negative side. So the AEM fuel pump I have does not have a connection like this. So I'm actually gonna have to do some wire work to make it run right. Um, nothing too complicated. I'll show you guys what I need to do. So I'm gonna remove this and go from there. Okay, so it is confirmed that you can leave the wiring harness on and be able to remove the whole mechanic, um, fuel pump assembly and whatnot to be able to swap out whatever new fuel pump you got. I uh, disconnected the power lines to the pump itself, undid the hose clamps on that hose, and I basically just put my finger on the power or sorry, the wiring harness just to feel like how much I'm pulling on it just to make sure that it doesn't have too much tension where I'm going to damage the wiring but I was able to just carefully push this push the sock through and everything came out so the point to where I was able to get this far was just loosen the hose clamps disconnect the power to the fuel pump and it should be able to get done again future reference if you guys want to cut maybe a little bit lower maybe six uh, six and a half inches or maybe even seven inches it may make pulling this out even easier so remember how I said to kind of clean out the area before lifting the fuel pump assembly? I have no idea where this came from, but just a quick peek in there. I saw that in there. Uh, a couple other stuff down in there, so I'm gonna do my best to try to get them out, but hopefully gives you guys an idea. So if you guys ever wondered how, what it looked like inside a fuel tank looked like in here. All right, ready took the fuel pump out of it. It just slides off where the sock is there and then just wiggle the top portion of the fuel pump off and now i'm gonna mount the new one on here's the new fuel pump here's the size for comparison each size doesn't really matter on this make sure to remove the covers on both where the sock goes and where the top hose goes here's how the connections are different as i said which isn't gonna be too much of a problem i'm just gonna uh, cut and splice wires and it should be good to go it uh, has its own um, pl terminated plug that I do not have with me at this moment, but I'll show you guys all that stuff. And yeah, I'm going to get this retrofitted on to the fuel pump assembly and go from there. I have the AEM provided sock on now. Just got it all dirty. <laughs> have it mounted. Make sure to remove this black cap that's covering that. Again, there's another cap up here as well. And in the bag, there's this 
we provided hardware that I'm a little confused right here. This came with AEM. Look at the original OEM pump and notice how that's right there. If you guys can see that. So that's this is what actually keeps the sock clamps on to the AEM. So I'm gonna mount it right there where that little peg is. Okay, got this rubber boot right here. We have these indentations. Slides on over like that. And that's it. Then this slides in the bottom of the ascent of the fuel pump assembly. Okay, so I got the AEM harness in. I just basically I cut the wire. Well, I cut the original wire off. Um, soldered it together. Put some heat shrink on it. Same thing for this. The cool thing about the negative for this is you can actually take off this terminal with a screwdriver and do it all right there. I did it all on the back of the car. No problems there. They used to heat shrink. I didn't want to use like connectors, mostly because this whole thing's going to be submerged. So I didn't really want any of the gasoline to hit the connections. So this is the best way that I found with what I got. So, all right, so I'm gonna get the new AEM fuel pump onto the assembly, drop it in, hook everything back up and cross my fingers. Here's the finished product. I ended up using the OEM um, little rubber boot down there cause it just fits better in the hanger. I couldn't get the AEM one to fit right. Got the cover on, everything's plugged in. You just gotta put the hose clamp on top on. Got the wires tucked in here in the back, so making sure there's no bend points, especially where I spliced them at. And should be good. All right, everything's hooked back up. Battery's hooked back up. Hopefully you guys can hear it prime from where the where the phone's at. And here, hopefully it starts. guys got it running it's been a couple days so fuel pump works but i had another failure too ignition coil so this is the second ignition coil i've had fail on the uh, obd1 specifically all these ebay manufactured uh distributors uh yeah they don't last more than a year if you're lucky at that so there you go guys if you have any questions hit me up uh instagram asian underscore is in station i'll do my best to answer you guys as fast as i can when i can hopefully you guys found this video useful and i'll catch you guys in the next one thank you for watching